Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here with my next Avatar video. This is going to be my Avatar 2024 preview. So we're going to take a look ahead at stuff that's coming out for Avatar next year and stuff that we assume will happen also. Um, just before we get into this video, I do want to mention that um, this is the last, the third of three end of year videos I do at the end of every year to kind of cover and then preview the next year in Avatar. You'll have already seen my top five Avatar and Korra story moments 2023 video. Uh, just last week you will have seen the 2023 Avatar year in review video and now we're here to do the preview ahead of next year 2024. A uh, final bit just before we get started is that I do want to mention that I do have a YouTube channel membership enabled on the channel. This is a great way to help support the channel. It's available at two tiers, Light Spirit and Avatar. At both tiers, you do get access to the loyalty badges and the custom emojis that you can use in the comments and live chat. And then also at the Avatar tier, you do get access to exclusive videos that I put up on the channel uh, usually once a month. Uh, these are different videos than I would usually put up on my channel. None of them are avatar focused because I put all my avatar stuff out. Uh, so this is a lot of video game uh, videos, um, uh, reviewing kind of other stuff. There's a bit of a backlog uh, of these at this point in terms of like the amount that you can go back and watch. But there's some interesting stuff there as the extra bonus. Uh, but like I said, it is mainly there to help support the channel. It is actually really really important in terms of how much it does help but let's get into the video so 2024 i think we have to lead off with the big thing here and that is that netflix live action avatar is actually properly coming out the first episodes the first season is going to air in 2024 and we don't really have too long to wait at all february 22nd is the release date for season one we do still need to see the full trailer where we should hopefully hear some of the dialogue from the main cast. So once the trailer goes well, this does look set to be a major success for Avatar. All they have to do is get the last stage of marketing right and they should be good because they don't have that much competition ultimately I suppose in terms of other Avatar stuff. Uh, in the first half of the year there's not a lot going on so Avatar has the, the Netflix Avatar has that kind of clear space right at the start of the year. So um, you know in terms of like my overall like how I'm feeling kind of heading into it um, you know in terms of overall quality it is very pressure off for me. If it's good great we have a good adaptation if it isn't received well, we have been here before and we've dealt with this before. So we would just then move on and look forward to Avatar Studios and the new animated projects. But the reality of it is that so far, it is looking very good. I expect this to be a massive improvement over the last Airbender movie and it doing well. You know, ultimately, it will depend on how picky fans are with the final product. But it is looking good so far. The reception to the, uh, the all the teasers of the first looks at cast members uh, in costume and then the initial teaser trailer, it's looking very, very good so far. The reason I just highlight that depends on how picky fans are is that so far we haven't had too much of a sense for like what changes they've made. If they do start to see, if we do start to see some of those changes, that might turn some people, but we have to wait and see. Um, so we have a comparison, obviously, to go off. Live action One Piece, also from Netflix, did very, very well. We hope to achieve the, the same, if not better, than the success of live action One Piece. And the essential thing to get Last Avatar The Last Airbender right is to do like live action One Piece did and that is to get the spirit of the show correct uh, and basically to not needlessly change stuff when you don't really have to and to just focus on the core of what this is getting those character arcs right getting the tone right and just hitting the the right beats that you expect from the Avatar The Last Airbender story visually 
I think things look absolutely great, but it will depend on the performances and definitely the writing quality to achieve the major success that is required. Because the actors can only do so much if they are given bad scripts and the scripts are going to really tell us how good the adaptation is. Because the script is where the last Airbender movie really, really went uh, wrong. Um, but. I think most people are relatively confident that we're in good hands here with the creators on Netflix Avatar. So I do hope it is successful, if not just because it will bring hype and interest back to Avatar and will set the stage nicely, hopefully, ahead of Avatar Studios potentially revealing stuff next year, the year after, we don't really know what's going on, as we will discuss in just a moment. The 2020 hype when Avatar The Last Airbender came to Netflix has now worn off. This, and it being successful, could get us back to that level and potentially more. Anything resembling the response to Netflix One Piece um, you know, should earn the show an immediate renewal for book two and three. And again, because it is so early in the year... A piece of news that probably would be expected at some point in 2024 probably is the confirmation that it's getting more. I believe One Piece live action got confirmed for more pretty early on just because of how successful it was and that was like in the middle of all the strikes and stuff like that so um, I think this will get an immediate, su immediate support if it does well. Um, last bit here just on Netflix is just a kind of more fandom focused concern. It's just the way Netflix releases their shows. It will be all eight episodes of season one all on the same day. So there's not going to be any sort of uh, two episodes to start off with. Wait a week, next episode. It's all out at the same time. And this does bring positive and negatives. The positive is obviously going to be that. We do get it all at once, there's no waiting. We will see overall how season one in total was done. The negative though is that it can, having experienced Netflix shows covering other ones on the channel like uh, Voltron, Dragon Prince, it can leave the discussion feeling a little bit rushed because everyone's rushing out there to watch all of the episodes so that they don't get spoiled on stuff at the end. They have to get to those later episodes uh, first. Um, and then it can end up like some of the earlier episodes, specifically smaller bits from the earlier episodes, can get glossed over because a lot of the focus is on how it ended rather than how it started or how the middle was. For me personally, making videos as a content creator, it does make it a bit of a daunting prospect of like, we wait months and months, we get this marketing cycle of slowly getting uh, drip fed everything. And then all of a sudden the entire show is just out in one go. What do I even attempt to do to cover like eight hours of content or however long it's actually going to be? Um, and that's the thing of like, do I rush to get a lot of videos out immediately or stretch it out, kind of let it breathe? I think because of how light a lot of the content looks for Avatar elsewhere in the first half of 2024, I think it is the best thing for the channel to just take it a little bit easy. I'll attempt to get some stuff out on like day one, but in terms of I think like individual episode reviews, that is something I think I'll take my time with and, and not try and just put out like 10 videos in the first week. Um, we have time. We'll have time on the channel to go over a lot of this stuff. Um, but it definitely does create this rush, you know, the, the kind of binge watching kind of uh, thing going on here. So that is Netflix Avatar. It is going to be massive, I think, at the start of the year. Um, the exact extent of that like I said, will depend on the specifics um, once we get the, the episodes and see all of the details. Then we go to the other big thing that we're sort of expecting, and that is Avatar Studio. So in terms of the want for more animated content, this is where that stuff is actually going to come from. And I'll say straight away that I changed my opinion. Like I, I initially had this kind of image looking a little bit different, saying different things, 
But because of relatively recent news, the apparent loss of the October 2025 date for the first movie, and then that combined with news from a few months ago that there's been quite a few layoffs at Avatar Studios, um, it does leave just in general how to perceive Avatar Studios uh, as a fan of Avatar in a very weird spot because they've not said anything. We're not hearing a lot of stuff in terms of positives about it. You know, what, what are we meant to say? Prior to these most recent pieces of news, I was very, very confident that the first big news, the first big reveals about the movie, about Avatar Studios, was going to come at the very least by the end of 2024. Now, I just don't really know. They still will have to say something eventually. Like, even if it's a small delay because of the, the date change and stuff like that, there's still a sense of like, well... Okay, we might be waiting a little bit longer, but they probably still have to say something in 2024. Um, it is going to be year four of Avatar Studios. They have to communicate, because that's the thing. Avatar Studios was announced February 2021. We have, by the time we get to February, we will have had three full years knowing about Avatar Studios, and we have really seen next to nothing about it we've waited a long time already three years is a long time um what's the the plan here ultimately that's what we need to see so to kind of cover some of that let's get into some speculation about what we might see over the course of the year so they need to give us actual details on this october 2025 or is it now actually undated movie the team avatar movie so straight away a title is badly needed so that we can actually properly refer to this movie without having to say like a million words. So that feels like something that I'd be really surprised if we maybe didn't know this by the end of the year. We just need to know what the movie is called. Uh, visuals. Yes, we have that mistakenly released image that we kind of weren't really meant to see, but that stands alone as being the only visual that like makes Avatar Studios feel real but they do need to put something out officially so that we can more accurately talk about it so a visual and a title as like an announcement immediately would just get a lot of attention um I would like some idea just to create some speculation uh, to uh, just to know about what's the movie actually going to be about okay it's adult team Avatar but what's it about about. What are we doing here? Is it Republic City focused? Is there a new villain? Is it a returning villain? What's the situation here? Um, and then, if indeed it is not October 2025 anymore, we will also need a new date. Is it just later 2025, a small delay, or are we pushed into 2026 at this point? What's happening? Then, we also... I think do need to get a bit of an update about the broader plans for Avatar Studios because it isn't just one project. It's not just they're doing the next Avatar animated thing. Everything that they have said publicly about Avatar Studios is multiple projects. We're working on a lot. When it finally comes out, we're going to get a lot. So let's just quickly go over everything we know officially before we get into speculation about what we kind of need. So we have confirmed three movies. They literally put out basically a press release confirming that there will be three animated movies, but we don't have any details on the second two. We only know details about the first, and we don't even know that much about the first one. They have officially said that they plan to use various formats across the projects, like movies, series, spin-offs, and short-form content. So again, we have not heard anything about any of this stuff. Like I say there, there's been no information officially on the first series. So you'll often see a lot of people saying, well, we know the first series is about the Earth Avatar after Korra. That is a strong rumor uh, that's decently sourced, but it is still just kind of insider information or rumored. It is not confirmed. Um, and that's the important thing. Avatar Studios have not officially said what the first series is actually going to be. Um, and then, yeah, that point there in purple at the bottom. They said that once they start putting out content, there will be, like, a lot suggesting somewhat regular releases. Meaning that, 
okay, whenever this first movie comes out, that the second project is not going to be that long after the first one. So it's been long enough since we've heard about the first project. So when is the announcement for the second project? That's the kind of big question. So here's what they need to do. And going off what I just said there, they need to announce the first series because this is you know, classic Avatar. ATLA is a series. Legend of Korra is a series. We're excited for the first movie, but we definitely want to know what the first series is. And in a way, I'm surprised that we haven't re heard anything about this except rumors because the movie's going to be in cinemas and sure, it will then go on the streaming platform, Paramount+. Plus. But they do need exclusive content for Paramount+. Plus, So a series is perfect for that because that's the only place you're going to see it officially. So I'm very surprised that we don't know anything about that given the plan for regular releases. If the rumours are, be are to be believed, the first series is also meant to be 2025 as well. Now, if the movie's been delayed, I assume the first series is also going to be delayed as well. It's hard to really speculate properly about this. They also would probably need to announce the second movie. And I think this would be more from a, like, what is the plan here to basically MCUify Avatar here? Is the movie a tie-in to the first movie? Is it a sequel to that first movie? Is it a separate plot point? It's rumored to be a Zuko-focused movie, whereas obviously the first one is more meant to be Team Avatar-focused. Zuko is in it, but it's not the focus is not on him so that's the whole idea there and then what about those other things like short form content and spin-offs when are they going to announce these like rumored projects like for different age groups like one of the rumored ones from you know earlier this year basically was a preschool show for avatar no real details about it but just one aimed at a younger audience but set in the world of avatar interesting idea so basically what we want to know is like what is the avatar studios roadmap or plan we have waited years we should know what the the plan is outside of just one project that again we even don't know much about that so um on a more broad sense because this is the, the i think a thing a lot, a lot of people forget avatar studios is not just there to make the Avatar animated stuff. They are the overall studio over the entire franchise, and that includes publishing, which we'll get to later on in the video. So they're over that. They ultimately say what the other licensors and stuff like that can and can't do. So I would like Avatar Studios to show us a plan for publishing and also merchandise that links in with these upcoming animated projects. Like, for example, will there be a, you know, a like movie tie-in comic or merchandise for this upcoming movie? Because they've always missed the mark, mistimed merchandise for Avatar. Might they finally get it right here with Avatar Studios? Hard to say. Um, and then the big one to help communication across the board. Yes, we want the big updates about the movie and so on. But why don't we just have the basic stuff? Why is there no official Avatar website? Why are the social media channels, you know, acting like Avatar and Korra are like the only things that exist in the franchise? They don't feel like they're up to the standard required for a big studio working on multiple projects that are potentially, you know, coming soon. And... Um, I really do get the impression that most fans do have official and rumoured information on Avatar Studios completely mashed together, mixed up. So just to solve that problem, I do think communication needs to be better. Like, it would be so helpful to just have an official website where we can just link people to, to be like, hey, here's what is out there publicly about this movie and I don't need to link some vague Paramount news article that came out a while ago confirming some of this stuff. That's the problem that we face, basically. 
Um, and then the last bit is just sort of like where slash when for news about Avatar Studios. The key dates and events to look for for potential Avatar Studios news are going to be sort of any general Paramount 2024 event. So investors meeting, investors call, they do Paramount up front. I don't have dates here just because like I don't think they did a lot of these in the usual way last year so I don't know if they're getting back to normal here there's still some weirdness going on in just the entertainment industry but you know there is a potential for some of this stuff to come out that way in terms of more I suppose direct where we'd probably expect a lot of this stuff to be announced it is the big two conventions so San Diego Comic-Con 2024 is July 25th to the 28th and New York Comic-Con 2024 is October 17th to the 20th so before the potential loss of the October date, which seems to be the case, um, October 2024 would mark a year to go until the first movie. And it always felt like that's what we're building towards, is that surely with exactly a year to go, at that point it, we're, we'll be in a situation where we know stuff about the movie and we're sort of into the news cycle of it and we're properly like building up to it has that changed now with these delays because if not then you're looking at the same events in 2025 for when they're actually going to do it and at that point you're still probably looking relatively close to the releases so is there a chance this year or has it passed by because of the delays i just don't know that's the, the main thing for me with Avatar Studios. I don't know. No one out there really seems to know. And it's hard to be confident. I, I also think it's kind of difficult to be hyper negative about Avatar Studios because things have been so light on information. But definitely difficult to just be purely optimistic given layoffs. The October date seems to be gone and still nothing being said, but we will move on. So into publishing now, and we'll start of course with Dark Horse Comics, where we have traditionally gotten kind of most of our story content in this kind of gap period since Korra has come to an end. So at the moment we have two books sort of like announced and roughly scheduled for 2024. On the Avatar side of things, we have the fifth Avatar one-shot comic, The Bounty Hunter and the Tea Brewer. This is currently scheduled for July 2nd slash July 3rd. Mass market and comic book store date uh, is why there's two dates there, the Tuesday and the Wednesday. Um, this comic is interesting because it's obviously a bit of a weird selection given kind of what we've had um, previously. Katara, T um, Toph, Suki, Azula, and then June and Iroh together. What's going on here? The interesting aspect of this book is that it does look like we're actually going to get a bit of a deep dive into the character of June, who we don't know super well because she's only appeared a couple of times. But it looks like they're going to do this interesting thing where they sort of interlink the backstories of June and Iroh in some way. And the implication perhaps seems to be that Iroh knew June's parents and June's parents are kind of why she is now currently a bounty hunter. And there's some other, other stuff going on as well, like the mention of a tea cartel. And that's what brings um, Iroh out of the Jasmine Dragon. But yeah, I, I think this one is kind of shaping up reasonably well. And I think it will surprise people when um, we actually get to see it. I'm, I'm eager to read it myself. On the Korra side of things, we get our first Korra one-shot. So we're not doing trilogies anymore, it seems like it. This book sort of confirms that. But they are doing in a way what fans have asked for, and that is give Mako some focus, give him a solo comic, and that's basically what we're getting here. But interestingly, based on the cover, the mystery of Penkan Island seems like it is going to be about Mako and Bolin's like backstory like what happened to their parents because i think it was a surprise to a lot of us when we saw the cover reveal 
and there's that burning picture of the Mako and Bolain family. We know um, um, their parents were killed by firebenders in the past, but why exactly did that happen? Are we going to delve into that here now that Mako is now like an established police officer? What role is Bolin going to play in this story? It looks like they're doing something kind of big here with this one, which I'm very excited for. I would have, in a way, been relatively happy with just time with Mako for a comic where he actually gets to stand out, but they're actually going for something kind of big here, so I do appreciate that. Currently, the Mako comic does not have an official release date. Um, I don't know if it's because they're just a little bit apprehensive about giving books release dates early on, given delays that have tended to happen, but this book looks like it's for sure going to come out after the Bounty Hunter and the Tea Brewer, so for sure it's probably going to be after July 2nd. My guess is that it's probably going to be somewhere in or around September to December. I, I think it kind of has to make it into 2024. I'd be really surprised if it didn't. How far into the year exactly it is, I'm not really sure. Because it could be announced for August. But it seems very close given that these are likely going to be two of the only releases for Dark Horse in the year, which is why I just say September to December. And again, you have to factor in the book might be delayed when it actually does get announced. So it could be September, but then get delayed into October. We, we just don't really know. But interestingly, this is all Dark Horse have. There's no other reprints or different editions of other books. This is all that they have officially coming out. Um, they're out of omnibus editions to do. It's been a long time since they announced their last uh, hardcover book. There's probably some announcements for next year still to come, but who knows when exactly they are going to arrive. It does set the stage that that probably means if they do announce something, it is going to be a little bit different than what they usually do. But we'll get to speculation uh, once we get through the kind of confirmed releases. So we'll move into Abrams books then. So the main thing, right in the middle there, you can see The Reckoning of Roku, Chronicles of the Avatar, book five by Randy Rabay. This book is coming out August 20th. So uh, we're going into what I'm guessing will be our second, or sorry, third duology uh, for the Avatar novels, this time focused on Roku. Interestingly, we switch author from FCE to Randy Rabay. And I think most of us are just sort of impressed that they've been able to transition between creators and between avatars so quickly here. And the only thing that seems to have happened here is that it's a little unfortunate that the book isn't coming out in July, which is the date in the year every other avatar novel has come out. It has now been delayed into August, a little bit different, but you know, the quick transition between creative teams is a positive that has to be noted. We don't currently have a cover reveal, probably coming January, February, which is when they would usually announce um, the novels, but um, that's just uh, where we're at right now. Otherwise, Abrams do have the paperback uh, versions of the Kyoshi books also roughly scheduled for 2024 as well. So the Rise of Kyoshi is scheduled for July 23rd. That one seems relatively locked in at this point. It seems like it is actually finally going to come out. The paperback for the Shadow of Kyoshi is less clear just how locked in it is, but this does seem to be the case. They're finally coming out quite a few years after their initial releases. Obviously, there were initial paperback reveals about like, oh, it'll come out like roughly a year after the initial releases, but then COVID hit. And I think Abrams just put paperback versions on the back burner. Now they're finally putting them out. Nice. It'll be cool that there's actually a cheaper uh, hard copy of these books out there. But uh, I don't know how much of a focus this necessarily is going to be beyond, hey, cool, a non-hardcover version of these books. That's kind of interesting. Um, also, I'll just add in very quickly here, likely there will be a 2025 calendar also from Abrams Books. Um, I'm not really sure what the plan is for that and what exactly is going to happen. We'll, we kind of have to wait and see what they announce uh, that to be. 
But we move on to Magpie Games, so the third of the big three publishers, and they do the Legends RPG, of course. So nothing announced for 2024 so far, but left over from the very early announcements about the game is that a second expansion is going to be a Spirit World book. So we would expect a Spirit World book in the style of the Republic City book that came out uh, this year for 2024. Otherwise, it would be nice to know what the plan is kind of beyond that initially planned content, because everything we know points to the fact that this game, the Avatar RPG, has been a huge success. I assume uh, everyone involved would want this uh, relationship to continue, and there's so much room to expand on the RPG into a variety of different places more adventures but at least for me kind of thinking about the bigger content i think stuff like a book to cover the yang chen era the settings for the yang chen era now that we have the novels uh, the Wan era i know has been much requested since the initial launch and because we do have beginnings and the yang chen novels these feel doable given that they would also work with Avatar Studios to get the other information and there's room to do a bunch of other stuff if they need to as well. So yeah we're just waiting on Magpie to get around to doing a proper announcement but yes the Spirit World book would be the main thing probably expected for 2024. Very difficult to predict when exactly this is going to come out but I'm assuming it'll probably be second half of 2024. Um, in terms of other books, nothing huge here, um, but there are a few. So straight away, going in sort of release order, we have Ang's Epic Adventures. That's actually coming out in just a few days, uh, January 2nd. Note that this is just a reprint book, and it's a weird reprint book from like 15 years ago. You don't often see this, but this is like a... 2007 8 era like book for avatar uh getting a weird re-release here this just has um two basically recap stories of book three episodes and then it has one non-canon story in it as well not sure why they wanted to do this and not something kind of new in a similar style, but it's there if you want it. Uh, there is I Am Zuko, the follow-up to I Am Ang, coming out January 2nd. This is one of these little golden books, which is just a, it's a couple of pages long. It's a very cheap book, but it's going to have a lot of new Zuko art as it goes through his story. It is a picture book, primarily aimed at kids, but Myself and many other fans really liked the art from the artist Bao Lu and uh, very excited to see more of this when this book actually comes out. Then, continuing on the picture book trend, February 27th is going to be the release of Avatar The Last Airbender, Heart of a Hero. Similar thing to I Am Ang, I Am Zuko and I Am Katara, but obviously different publisher but you can see it's going for a similar style of art this is going to be a bigger book it's going to have more pages and um, and just be more broad covering the story of avatar it looks like a fun book and um, if you're into this style of thing and want the new art and um, there it is and um, i am katara is going to be the third i am picture book and uh, we don't have a cover for this yet i'm assuming it will be revealed in the first few weeks of 2024 that currently is scheduled for june 18th and then the final picture book for avatar is going to be my cabbages a cabbage merchant focused picture book coming out august 27th again no pictures there but that one looks kind of interesting just because the Cabbage Merchant, while he appears in a few episodes, it's not exactly a super clear story. So I'm interested to see how they structure this book to turn it into a proper book covering his arc. I'm assuming there's probably going to have to be a few little bits and pieces that we maybe didn't see in the show. Otherwise, I don't know how they're going to fill out the page count. But um, that looks to be the lineup, basically, for the year. Uh, and then just some final things just before we get into speculation. Beast of the Four Nations. I feel I have to mention this in every single one of these big videos until this book actually comes out. So we've known about this book since May 2021. As of late 2022, it has been cancelled awaiting a re-announcement. Given 
that the other five deluxe sets are already out, the art books for Avatar and Korra, uh, I feel they have to announce this one soon. Uh, it's getting to the point where it is just simply unacceptable to leave customers, fans, uninformed this long about a very expensive collection of six books that we currently have five of and the time between five and six is growing longer and longer. I hope this is the year they finally just confirm what's happening with this because it's getting really out of hand as to what's happening here. Um, so yeah, then into proper book speculation about stuff that could also happen in the year. So with the comics, we would definitely expect the next Avatar The Last Airbender comic, which would be one-shot number six, the follow-up to The Bounty Hunter and the T-Brewer. We would expect this to be announced and released in 2024, um, because the creative teams always tend to do the books in groups of three. So we assume there is another one, and typically... These get released four to six months after the previous book. So roughly four to six months after the June Iroh comic does put us in the range of the very end of 2024, maybe the very start of 2025. We will probably also during the year find out what the second Korra one shot is, because again, that is a trilogy of one shots. But I'd be very surprised if that w ended up being a 2024 book. Just because it's looking like the Mako comic is coming out late in the year. That I don't think there's much chance that the second book also <laughs> makes it out late in the year. Um, like I said, Beast of the Four Nations, I feel just that they have to say something about it. I mentioned it before. They don't have, Dark Horse don't have much else going on this year. So they need to announce some other books, so I'm hoping something else does get added in to fill out their schedule. Magpie obviously will have to talk about the Spirit World book, and hopefully something else. And then, because I don't really know what's going on with Beasts of the Four Nations, I do think it is somewhat reasonable to expect that Dark Horse will do something else. So, might we see the announcement of another short story collection? like Team Avatar Tales or um, Patterns in Time, because they do need to reprint some of the sort of scattered free comic book day books from the last couple of years. They need to get a, a proper release, um, and so that could open up the door to some more short stories, but uh, we of course have to wait and see. So that would put the overall publishing schedule next year as looking something like this. Um, so you can see in terms of like reprints, not a lot going on. Paperbacks for the two Kyoshi novels, Ang's Epic Adventures, which I don't think many people are going to be too focused on. Um, and a lot of the new books, as you can see here, are going to be picture books. So I am Zuko, Heart of a Hero, I am Katara, My Cabbages, they're all picture books and not necessarily full-on new content. We're going to have for sure two new comics next year, one novel, uh, and then in terms of like um, not confirmed yet for the year stuff, potentially the next Avatar comic after Bounty Hunter and the Tea Brewer, um, Spirit World Legends RPG book, hopefully, and maybe Beast of the Four Nations. And then there's always room for the publishers to just begin to announce other stuff like we could see like say uh, an I Am Sokka book or something like that. I Am Toph maybe is the more likely one. We'll see how far they go with uh, that sort of things in terms of the smaller scale book announcements. Um, so publishing out of the way, that brings us into merchandise. So I, I always say this at the start of this section because it gets really awkward to talk about sometimes. A lot of the stuff I'm going to talk about here is stuff that was originally scheduled for late 2023, but is now delayed into like the first part of 2024. So not a lot of this stuff is going to be feel new because we've known about it for so long, but merch has been all over the place for the last two years. We know very little about what is com coming up apart from like early in the year stuff. And then I'll just mention this here. Companies that have had nothing Avatar for a year plus will not be mentioned here just because of their inactivity. I would recommend going back to this section of my video previewing last year. Um, 
to see some of this stuff like the kickstarter for the board game and stuff like that whatever happens with that there just hasn't been updates on quite a few of these companies in quite a while and then one other note just before we start will there be netflix avatar merch given that it's technically only a couple of weeks away what's actually going to happen here my guess is that I don't think there is going to be much, if any, Netflix Avatar merch. I feel with how close it is to the release, we would have heard something. I think we will get the basic stuff like posters and t-shirts. There's maybe a chance for a Funko Wave that is more live action focused, but I think we would have heard about that if it was going to happen. Take a look at Netflix. One Piece, also very popular, an adaptation. It has very, very minimal merch. I think literally there really only is posters and t-shirts and the odd thing here or there. There's not a full giant toy line or anything like that. So I don't think we should be expecting that. So do keep that in mind. Um, then we have Diamond Select Toys. So very similar to the 2023 kind of year in review video, but both of these are now looking like early 2024 releases, the Toph and the Iroh. Based on also what they said in Q&As, we would probably expect more diorama announcements from Diamond Select in 2024. Sokka makes sense to be the obvious next character because he would flesh out the uh, the kind of remaining member of like the core team avatar group. Beyond that, I guess we'd maybe maybe be looking at Suki, uh, Azula perhaps, Mei, Tai Li, or a past avatar. It's hard to tell with a lot of these companies how deep into the character kind of uh, archive they're going to go. But I think the fact that they've done an Iroh speaks to the fact that they probably will do at least a few more um next company is first four figures uh, in a similar situation to diamond select toys where they announced stuff last year but it's only going to see release in 2024 uh, with them because they're newer to making avatar stuff there will probably be more announcements in 2024 so they've got the ang coming out the Toph a little bit later in the year uh, and then they do have other lines like busts, which we haven't really seen a bust uh, style statue for Avatar. It will be interesting to see an Avatar uh, bust get announced by first four figures. Um, so one to keep an eye out for if you're looking for maybe some different merch throughout the year. Um, but we'll go on to Funko. Obviously, we don't know anything about like confirmed because we did just get a wave of Avatar Funkos that was new that dropped in the last few weeks of 2023. So overall, I think it's fair to say it would be surprising to see a lot of Avatar Funkos in 2024. Maybe a, a figure here and there like typically happens. And um, we have to assume that we will get Funkos for Avatar Studios stuff whenever it actually happens. Um, but we're probably still a bit off actually properly finding out about that stuff. So unfortunately, might be a light year for um, Funko when it comes to Avatar. Uh, U2s has been a consistent merchandise performer and they do actually have some stuff for early next year. So, so far they seem to have uh, standard figures for Ronin, Momo and Samurai Appa. They also have some interesting Appa slippers that they're doing. As well as I think a very, very interesting item here is a Animal Plush blind box set basically now do keep in mind these are super expensive blind boxes i think it's like 30 dollars for one of these um blind box animal plushes um but it is a very cool thing that they're doing some of the more kind of smaller animals and stuff like that it's a cool idea but you know hard to super heavily recommend it given the size and price and also the availability of a lot of youtube stuff but it is nice to see them going as one of the more consistent um manufacturers over the years mcfarlane and the loyal subjects just don't seem to be doing avatar stuff anymore don't know what the problem is and um, there is you might maybe have some speculation that have some of the bigger manufacturers moved on to maybe early stages of planning stuff for 
Avatar Studios merchandise uh, for the movie? Hard to say. Really, really hard to say. But I think that basically is it for merchandise. It's just one of those things where it has slowed down in the last couple of years. It was There was a lot of merch in like 2021, but last year, this year, things haven't been great and it doesn't look fantastic for 2024. So we have to wait and see if we can um, get going again on the merch side of things. And then just some some bigger topics, some news kind of items and stuff like that that don't necessarily fit into the other categories. But I think we do have to talk about the soundtrack and also uh, the Avatar in Concert for 2024. So 2024 will see the start of Avatar in Concert. We, of course, will expect to see more showings and locations become available in what we do expect to be a popular event. It'll be interesting to follow um, the rollout of Avatar in Concert to see how the first couple of performances go, how it's received, what merch they're kind of selling at these events and so on. But the other side of that is what about the soundtrack itself? We saw the launch of Book One Water finally getting its soundtrack release uh, right at the end of uh, 2023. What about Book Two Earth? When is that soundtrack coming out? So I think it's definitely a reasonable thing to say that we probably will expect to see the Book Two Earth soundtrack get announced and probably also be released in 2023, uh, in 2024, just to show that there is a schedule for the soundtrack releases uh, in play. Um, but very difficult to speculate when we don't really know what way this is all worked. Um, it very hard to say because they have book two, book three, there's the Korra soundtracks to also do where like, are they going to re-record stuff for them? No idea. Um, next, Braving the Elements season three. So this is the podcast, the official podcast hosted by Dante Bosco and Janet Varney. Um, so after a long wait for an update, the podcast was finally confirmed for season three at New York Comic Con 2023. The season will begin in January. I don't think we have an exact date, but I assume we will find out shortly. While the podcast has overall never really done much for me, certain interviews have been very interesting. So the main reason I have this here is just to one, highlight that, hey, it's, it'll, it's actually coming out pretty soon, but also it will be cool to see them do another Mike and Brian interview. And it could be a way in which we could get a more recent update on Avatar Studios from Mike and Brian. They have promised in the, the kind of teaser stuff for season three that there will be like cast and crew interviews. And there's kind of a, a sense of like they kind of need to launch season three with a bit of a bang. And it would be nice to see the official podcast maybe present a little bit of news with the uh by having the creators on but we just don't know what the full situation is then the last piece of news video game news after 2023 actually had a video game and a mobile game the news has died down and all we have to go on for 2024 is that there is another 2024 mobile game in development so while we know next to nothing about this game, it is nice to see that there are plans for an Avatar video game in 2024. This is going to be a very different type of game to Avatar Generations based on the description. You can see some of the phrases from the press release here. Multiplayer strategy. It's about building an army and a community. Building cities, managing resources, construct and upgrade buildings, explore the world. There's going to be tactical combat. This is going to be published by Tilting Point, developed by AN Games. For now, not a lot to say because they didn't really show off anything. They sent me an image with the press release, but it's just a bunch of stock art that we've had for years. Not at all in any way representative of what the game is actually going to be. So hopefully in early 2024, we actually do find out something about this and it uh, does well. And that pretty much brings the preview to a close. 2024 overall, it should be the year where big projects take the spot spotlight. Netflix Avatar to start off the year, maybe some meaningful information about Avatar Studios animated projects by the end of the year. 
that would be a nice thing to have because it is beginning to feel like this is going to be the year where if they don't say anything about Avatar Studios, I think it's hard not to worry that if we're, if I get to the point next year where I'm doing my 2025 preview video and I'm still over here, like maybe next year we'll find out something. It's just getting to be this crazy situation and we know communication is in an awful position, which kind of sums up how the comics are right now. They remain in a frustrating position. The right choice of kind of future one shots in terms of news next year is going to help, but they definitely need more. The comics feel like they've been off track for a little bit and that they've been in a much better position years and years ago. The Roku novel is definitely going to be a major release in the year. It will ensure a substantial piece of new story content actually comes out in 2024. That's going to be uh, huge. Merch, definitely in a rough spot. There's not a lot to say about it based on the lineup right now. Purely waiting on notable releases. It looks like Diamond Select is going to be making up most of the year in terms of reasonably priced statues beyond that there's not too much to get excited on based on what has been announced i do worry about the first half of 2024 where really there is only netflix avatar and that's all going to drop at the same time on release day in february then there'll be a giant gap up until the first publishing release of the year in july for the bounty hunter and the tea brewer and I just worry a little bit that when some of the crazy hype for Netflix Avatar dies down, maybe mid to late March, that it's going to be a rough like four months to get us to the rest of the stuff unless there is backup from elsewhere in the year. That's kind of the problem here is that this doesn't really look like the year where things are going to be taken to a next level just because there are so many questions and I think more and more of the reaction to Avatar Studios is like, I don't care until you actually have something to say. Um, and some of that negativity beginning to come into play just is frustrating as a fandom. So yeah, Netflix Avatar, there's a lot of hype behind it. It looks like it will deliver. Um, Will it be able to sort of maintain the entire year when publishing isn't quite, you know, getting to the point where it's doing more than maybe expected? But um, they are my thoughts overall on Avatar heading into 2024. And getting into the end of the video, I would like to thank my Avatar tier channel members, uh, Austin Hearth, KD Love, Persian Lagoon, Callum Fishick, uh, Brit in Toyland, uh, Martin Monterosa, and Cash Dees. Thank you for your support. Again, if you are interested in also helping out, there is the join button uh, there. And like I said at the start, you can gain access to uh, loyalty badges and um, emojis you can use in the chat and at the avatar tier exclusive videos but um other than that that has been the end of the video so please in the comments let me know what your thoughts are heading into 2024 for avatar do you feel positive about the year um do you think it's going to be another year very similar to the last couple where we're just waiting to see things happen? How big of an impact is Netflix Avatar going to have for you? How popular do you think it will be? And all these other things just in general, your thoughts heading into 2024 for Avatar. But uh, other than that, that has been the video. Thanks for watching and bye.